Tuesday, November 27, 2018, I'm calling this meeting of the Common Council of the City of Wausau in order. We'll begin tonight's proceedings with the pro oh, excuse me, with the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please press yes to take roll call. And Mr. Smith. There we go. We have 11 members present. And we have one proclamation tonight. And I'm very honored to see so many special guests here to celebrate this. So thank you for attending. The City of Wausau Indigenous People's Day Proclamation. Whereas the month of November is National Native American Indian Heritage Month, officially declared by President George H.W. Bush in 1990, and whereas the state of Wisconsin is comprised of the 11 federally recognized tribal nations, including the Bad River Band of Lake Superior Tribe of Chippewa Indians, Forest County Potawatomi, Ho-Chunk Nation, Lakur or Lair, and I hope I said that right, Band of Lake Superior Chippewa Indians, Lac du Flambeau Band of Lake Superior Chippewa Indians, the Menominee Nation, Oneida Nation of Wisconsin, the Red Cliff Band of Lake Superior Chippewa Indians, St. Croix Chippewa Indians of Wisconsin, Sakagan Chippewa Community, and the Stockbridge Munsee Community Band of Mohican Indians. And whereas Wasso citizens include members, descendants, and allies of these and other federally recognized tribes, including myself, and the important history of the First Nations in Wisconsin is affirmed and in recognition that each tribe possesses a distinct culture, custom, traditions, government, and sovereignty, and in recognition that this history and diversity strengthens the Wausau community. Now therefore, be it resolved that I, Robert B. Melke, Mayor of the incredible city of Wausau, proclaim the second Monday in October as Indigenous Peoples Day, and I invite everybody to celebrate in that. We also have Trisha Zunker here to represent, and she's gonna be bringing an elder as well, I believe, so. Welcome. Good evening. Ho Chunk Rashka Hinakupi Hingade. Um, I just want to say a thank you. I think the resolution speaks for itself. Um, when I reached out to Wasa City Council, every person that did respond to me was very supportive, and Mayor Milky was very supportive as well. So I say a thank you. Now, um, as an enrolled Ho Chunk member, I feel uncomfortable being the one to say a few words when I have a Ho-Chunk elder here. So if you don't mind, I'm actually going to introduce Marty Littlewolf. He is a Ho-Chunk elder to just say a few words and why uh, you should we? Greetings. Welcome. Salutation. Uh, Ho-Chunk, we say a ho. You know. ho. And, uh, and then uh, uh, we have names. And I got a Ho-Chunk name. Kiska Maniga. My, my Indian name, and uh, I'm retired, and uh, I really, uh, it's really nice that uh, uh, there's a con consideration for the native, we're, we're natives from generations back, way back, I, I, and, uh, way, way, way back, forefather, way back. We have, we have, we have stories, we have stories from way back. But our stories are, it's not written, it's uh, what they call an oral, oral, oral. So it's really uh, nice that uh, you can uh, recognize our, our uh, Native Americans. And I'm a Ho-Chunk. And, uh, and, uh, and I'm, I'm at the age of 76. And my, my son is uh, 54 and I, f I feel that we're twins, we're both 54. <laughs> And then, uh, but I'm labeled, it seems like I'm labeled as an elder. I don't feel that. I think when I get in uh, uh, 90s, I think, I think I might be an elder then. <laughs> but I re really appreciate uh, your uh, consideration for, uh, for, for us, for you know, us here. I really appreciate it very much, you know. And, uh, and, uh, to, to come to, it's really, it's uh, come together, you know. Come together, it's really nice. So I, 
Well, thank you for your kind words, okay. and it's something that needs to be recognized and should have been done a long time ago. Okay, you're really okay. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, uh, thank you uh, for listening to me. <laughs> Proclamation, Ms. Sunker, the proclamation is up front there if you'd like to take it with you. Thank you so much. Moving on, we have a number of residents that would like to speak. Thank you, Tricia. Take care. And for pre-registered citizens for matters appearing on the agenda or for other public comment, we'll start off with Mr. Matt Brewer, please. Good evening. And if you could state your name and address for the record. Yes. And try uh, to limit your comments to three minutes, please. I'll do that. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, my name is Matt Brewer, 4180 Deer Tail Lane, Wausau, Wisconsin, 54401. I'm here representing Aspirus. I'm the Vice President of Operations for Aspirus Clinics. Uh, I wanted to take a moment and uh, to give a big thank you to Mayor, uh, City Council members. Thank you for all the support and guidance through this process that we've been going through. Um, it's been very much appreciated. Uh, thank you to all the community members and uh, local business leaders that have supported us and uh, been present as we've been going through this journey. Without all of the support and the people associated, I'm not sure we would have made it even this far. So uh, Aspirus appreciates it and all the support from everyone involved. Uh, thank you very much. Um, I, won't, I won't keep you long this evening. I only have a couple of thoughts here that um, I really wanted to share. So. Um, from maybe a couple of perspectives. Uh, number one, first as a registered nurse and a healthcare executive, um, this uh, new campus that we're looking to build, I think represents um, a number of things for us. Number one, it's, it's how we want to, in the future, take care of our ill patients, the people who already have disease. But then also on top of that, it's, this is a new and innovative way of how we're going to provide education for people who don't have disease. And it's the prevention portion of what we do every day and a large amount of what my education was built on as a registered nurse. Um, I also want to share something from being a new community member. And even outside of being an executive for health, in healthcare or being a registered nurse, I moved here about two years ago. And um, I'm a father of four school-age children. I'm a husband to a wife that interacts in the community. And about two years ago, we sat down and said, you know, where do we want to raise our family? And what type of environment do we want to raise our family in? Uh, we had some criteria that we set up. We were living in Madison at the time, and we said, we've got to have growing, thriving healthcare. We've got to have a growing and developing community. Um, we've got to have great public schools. I believe in the public school system. I went through public school my entire life. And I think we found those things here, right? And, and so as we got to Wausau, we moved here to work with Aspirus, but then we've just found so much more in this community. And I think this project really speaks to what we were looking for as a young, growing family. I feel that I represent a growing demographic, maybe a silent demographic that's growing this community of young professionals raising families, uh, utilizing our public schools in our community. And I, I speak on behalf of those folks this night. This, uh, Please this bring more. <laughs> <laughs> I will attempt to. Okay. Um, in, in the end, though, I think from um, whether it be uh, speaking as, uh, me speaking as a community member or as an executive here this evening, um, in the end, this project is really meant to bring us together, though. Right, it's not meant to break us apart. Um, I think this has caused some concern, and I, I want everyone to hear. Aspirus is here to listen. We want to hear what those concerns are. We want to help mitigate those things, and we've we've been trying to make every attempt along the way to do so. And so I thank you for um, uh, anything you, you you do for us this evening and moving forward. And I appreciate all the help thus far. Thank you. Right at three minutes, that was good. So. <laughs> Mr. Chad Kane. Good evening, Chad Kane, 500 First Street uh, in Wausau. And uh, I'll be a lot shorter than Matt. Um, thank you very much. Uh, we've appreciated the process that you've uh, uh, taken us through. And I just want to make mention to uh, all the collaboration that's gotten us to this point. Uh, the city staff under the mayor's uh, guidance has been fantastic. Uh, they've been wonderful to work with. And they haven't gotten much uh, recognition during this process. But they've been very helpful and collaborative and as we've gone along here. So I wanted to thank them. Uh, the Aspirus uh, group, as Matt just mentioned, has been very engaged. Uh, this has turned into a wonderful project. And I also appreciate all the committee meetings and the city council meetings that you have all attended and listened to the entire process uh, play out before you. So it's, it's very much appreciated. Um, had a great 
uh, phone call yesterday from a new donor uh, for the Y portion of this project. Uh, we are up to $19 million right now uh, with commitments from the local community. And this is an individual that, that called up and um, uh, they're going to give a significant gift. It's a longtime Wausau resident and business owner, uh, is not even a YMCA member, uh, but has lived in the community his whole life. And he ended the very brief phone call by saying, my wife and I support this completely uh, because it's a great thing for Wausau. And I keep hearing that phrase over and over and over from the overwhelming generosity that we have in this community. This is a great thing for Wausau. So thank you for considering the request before you tonight. Thank you. Mr. Brian Bailey. Brian Bailey, 707 Third Street. Uh, just following that a little bit on there. I, I'm really here to just comment about uh, the rezoning uh, topic. It's, it's vitally important for us to, to really continue the 111 year history on that block and, and really allow us to, to meet the community needs just as we have for those 111 years. As Chad mentioned, the community has tremendously supported this project, uh, both from the individual and the business uh, aspect. And we're looking forward to really putting a product that our community can be proud of. And that's gonna serve everyone from infants to seniors uh, and everywhere in between fr from that. So with that, I wanna thank everyone on the council. I wanna thank the, the commissions and the various committees we've been at. I know you have tough jobs and I thank you for your support. Thank you. Mr. Mark Craig. Hi, I'm Mark Craig, 814 Adams Street. Uh, I represent Compass Properties and just wanted to, I was glad to come tonight and see the resolution. So it's nice to celebrate our indigenous people. So congratulations, that was very nice. Um, I also wanted to just comment on the YMCA project and support the rezoning uh, with the Spirus uh, Health and Wellness Campus. It's such an important part of where we're going as a community and what needs to happen for our future to bring more people to our community and to continue to build our downtown. Uh, many years ago, uh, some tough decisions got made in this council to create a, a regional shopping center, close eight city blocks and close Highway 51. And that was a difficult decision. But for 30 years, it changed the economics of our downtown. Uh, this proposal to bring a $40 million health and wellness campus has that same capacity. In fact, it's probably, since the mall, the largest single development that could take place in downtown. So we fully support it. You know, 15 years ago when we wanted to build the hotel and close Second Street, which at that time was the main artery into downtown, there was controversy because we were gonna shift traffic one block over onto Jefferson Street. But with the support of the city and the council and eventually the community, we did so and very few people probably even remember that, second, that the hotel is sitting on 2nd Street. So, you know, tough decisions get made here and you folks have done such a great job. So I hope tonight there's a unanimous vote. It was a unanimous vote at Plan Commission and it'd be nice since the message tonight is coming together. I heard that from the Ho-Chunk tonight and I heard that from Aspirus and I hope tonight as a community we all come together and support this unanimously. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Chuck Dorsey. Chuck Adorze, One Corporate Drive, Wausau. I too would like to take this opportunity to thank all of you, our city council and our city staff for your support in helping create this well health and wellness campus. Through our journey over the last several months, we have been encouraged and indeed energized by your steadfast support. Our neighbors have also been big, a big part of bringing this all together and we wanna thank them as well. This is a great community we live in and call our home. We stay vibrant because city council and business leaders before have gathered like this to seize the opportunities that are before us to become even better. It is, our, it is your vote tonight that will again define who we are and our unending quest to keep our project moving forward. And for that, our community thanks you. Thank you very much. Moving on to the consent agenda, starting with file number 18-1114 from the SISM Committee, resolution establishing assessment rates for the 2019 new streets construction and projects. 
and ending with file number 04-1212 from Finance, a resolution approving terminating emergency medical services contract with the Village of Brokaw. I'll entertain a motion to accept. Motion by Mr. Peckham. Do I have a second? By Ms. Kelbach. Thank you. Begin voting, please. Motion passed unanimously. And moving on to the resolutions and ordinances, starting with file number 18-1103, the mayor's appointments. We have two different committees, one a subcommittee and one an actual committee for the Sustainability, Energy, and Environmental Committee, Environment Committee, excuse me, <laughs> with four members. You have a majority of the biographies on there. And then for the Dog Park Subcommittee, now there was one member, one alternate, Mr. Milt Pockel, who has had to bow out and will not be doing that. You're aware of that. So he will not be voted on, but everybody else is there uh, just to get these committees going. And I'll entertain a motion to accept. Motion by Mr. Neal, second by Mr. Nutting. Begin voting, please. Motion passed unanimously. File number 18-1109 from the Finance Committee, a resolution adopting the 2019 City of Wassa budget and the general property tax to support the same. Committee action approved 5 to 0. The fiscal impact will be a levy of $27,855,796.71, including tax increment. I'll entertain a motion to accept. Motion by Mr. Nutting. Do I have a second? By Ms. Herbst. Begin voting, please. Dawn, yours didn't come through yet, please. That's okay. There we are. That motion passed 11 to 0. File number 17-1109. From the Finance Committee, uh, approving the budget modification for the purchase of a Kubota RTV with Sander. Committee action approved 5 to 0. The fiscal impact will be $20,800. Entertain a motion to accept. Mr. Peckham, do I have a second? By Ms. Tao. Thank you. Begin voting. Motion passed unanimously. File number 18-0608, a joint resolution of the Capital Improvements and Street Maintenance Committee and the Plan Commission approving a vacation order to transportation project plat 6999-18-03 for parcel 1 at 1040 South First Avenue. Committee action, SISM approved 4 to 1, the Plan Commission approved 7 to 0. Fiscal impact, no cost will be incurred. I'll entertain a motion to accept. Motion by Ms. Herbst. Do I have a second by Ms. McElhaney? Thank you. Begin voting. Motion passed 10 to 1. File number 14-0707, a joint resolution of the Capital Improvements and Street Maintenance Committee and the Plan Commission approving a vacation order to transportation project plat 6999-18-01 for parcel 67 at 1405 Town Line Road. Committee action, SISM approved 5 to 0, plan approved at 7 to 0. The fiscal impact, no cost will be incurred. Entertain a motion to accept. Motion by Ms. Kalbach, a second by Mr. Neal. Begin voting, please. That motion has passed unanimously. File number 18-1117, an ordinance of the Plan Commission rezoning 707 North 3rd Street from an R4 General Residence District to a B4 Central Business District. Committee action approves 7 to 0. The fiscal impact will be none. Entertain a motion to accept. Motion by Mrs. Rasmussen. Do I have a second? By Mr. Nutting. Begin voting. Motion passed 11 to 0. Also file number 18-1117, a resolution of the Plan Commission approving a conditional use at 707 North 3rd Street to allow for a daycare center in a B4 Central Business District. Committee action, plan approved at 7 to 0. The fiscal impact will be none. I'll entertain a motion to accept. Motion by Mr. Neal. Do I have a second? By Ms. Herbst. 
you may begin voting. That motion has passed unanimously. File number 94-0828, a resolution on the Room Tax Commission approving the tourism entity agreement between the City of Wausau, its Room Tax Commission, and the Wausau Central Wisconsin Convention and Visitors Bureau Incorporated. Committee action approved four to zero. Fiscal impact is pending. Entertain a motion to accept. Motion by Mr. Neal. Do I have a second by Mrs. Rasmussen? Begin voting. That motion passed unanimously. And at this time, I'll entertain a motion to suspend the rules. Number one, paragraph D, transmission of committee business to the council. For the items marked pending committee action, a two-third vote is required. Entertain a motion to accept. Motion by Mr. Peckham, second by Mr. Nutting. Begin voting. Motion passed unanimously. File number 18-1116, a resolution of the Finance Committee approving the acquisition of 134 East Thomas Street. <coughs> committee action approved 5 to 0. The fiscal impact will be $72,500. Entertain a motion to accept. Motion by Ms. Kalbach, second by Mrs. Rasmussen. Begin voting. That motion has passed 8 to 3. And a resolution of the Finance Committee for file number 02-1005, approving the acquisition of 101 East Thomas Street. Committee action approved 5 to 0. The fiscal impact will be $141,000. Entertain a motion to accept. Motion by Mr. Nutting. Second by Ms. Herbst. Begin voting. That motion has passed 8 to 3. And we do have an addendum. And I apologize to you folks for the lateness in getting some of this information. Due to the holiday last week, and we were short-staffed, the McIndoe Street vacating item was inadvertently left off the council, but it was put on. And I'll also add that the measure and the zoning item were both passed at the last Tuesday's Plan Commission meeting, and the McIndoe Street vacating was passed at the CISM meeting two weeks ago. The target date to complete the city's council and committee process on this project was set for today, November 27th. Now, completing the city's portion of these approvals together was a way that we're done in committee. It makes sense, and especially since there's only one more council meeting scheduled for this year. So, moving on to the addendum. For file number 18-0704, a joint resolution vacating and discontinuing McIndoe Street from North 2nd Street to North 3rd Street. CISM approved 4-1, to one. Plan Commission approved 7-0. to zero. I'll entertain a motion to accept. Motion by Mr. Nutting. Do I have a second? Mrs. Rasmussen? Mr. Gisselman. I question really why this is coming to the City Council at this time. I think we're waiting, since we're waiting for um, the DOT, Wisconsin DOT, as well as some other issues, I think that we should be the one that would be waiting until that is complete, having that report in front of us so that we can say yes or no it's a um, the the situation agrees with the city, and we're with it right now. We're not quite sure what's going to be happening, with, especially with the DOT uh, report. Uh, it just sort of moves on into what I consider sort of a limbo type of thing. How does how do we know what kind of a report will be coming to the Wisconsin from the Department of Transportation? How are we going? The city council really does not have any action after this. I mean, we're just passing it off and and uh, leaving um, Eric and the and the uh, the city hall staff to to deal with it. I mean, we're I think this is much too early at this point in the game for us to be deciding this. I think we should be waiting until we have the final report. Fi the final issues, then this city council can act on the final package. Mrs. Rasmussen. Thank you. Um, this actually um, is not the final step. I think that um, I just want to correct the record on that. Um, the way the items passed in plan and in CISM were with a contingency. They passed with approval contingent upon 
um, review and acceptance by the Wisconsin DOT of the rerouting of the two state connecting highways, Business 51 and State Highway 52. And that process is happening in parallel with our approvals for a reason because the city's committee and council approval work with the contingency really should happen first. One of the things the DOT looks for in this decision making process is clear support from the community and its governing body. And so absent that from us, there's not a clear signal of support for any of what they're doing. So that said, once we complete that with the contingency, nothing happens until the state has completed their work and, and blessed the transfer of the jurisdiction, jurisdiction. But there would be subsequent committee and council action on a state municipal agreement for the jurisdictional transfer of the two roadways. So once the state completes its process and gets its report, they issue what's called a um, finding of no significant impact, if that's their will. And once that happens, then they start to draft the jurisdictional transfer agreement, which transfers um, the portion of Mackindu in question to us to dispose of as we need to. And then it also then would transfer the portion of Scott Street and 5th and 6th that would be substituting for those connecting highways to them to take care of and handle. And so once that contract is drafted, that gets approved in council or in CISM and at council. And it's expected that that would happen um, you know, mid-2019 by the time they get through all of their processes. But that um, item would still be coming back for that final approval of the transfer, official transfer of the right-of-way. But this gesture to approve this with a contingency would signal our clear support to DOT for this project and for the reroute after they've worked with all of their neighbors to pare down the request to just the one block of Mackindu. And, uh, you know, that said, there's been a groundswell of public support for the project, but we also need to communicate that there is intergovernmental support for this process as well. And that's why we would be doing it today. Mr. Gisselman. I think the, I think the Your microphone, Gary, Sorry, please. thank you very much. Mm -hmm. um, I think that the Plan Commission as well as CISM has given its, pretty much its, it's okay. You know, I think it has gone through committee action but I think the final action is up to this city council uh, with re when we do hear the, the uh, and I agree with the, uh, the, the, munis the, the state agreement, but I, I fear that we should be seeing that final agreement here um, and the results of, from the DOT and, and thus we would be able to pass it and go forth with the understanding of what what's going to be happening uh, to Mackindu uh, and to whatever arrangements are made with from the DOT. So I'm still hesitant about this. Um. Mrs. Tao. I, I just want to share that I think there's significant public and uh, businesses that support the initiative. I think that everyone on the city council and city staff also supports the, uh, the YMCA expansion and the new uh, health and wellness campus uh, from Aspirus. I think that it's just more of a, a process and it would be nice to have all the information in front of us instead of adding contingencies and exceptions. I don't think there's anyone on this council that would disagree that we don't uh, appreciate and support the opportunity. And so I just want to share uh, my sentiments that I agree with um, Elder Gisselman on just being a little prepared and you know waiting for the due diligence and getting all that information in front of us. Thank you. Mrs. Rasmussen. Thank you. Um, I think that um, we really have nothing to fear from this process. The DOT um, and our engineering staff would not recommend and propose for approval a plan that doesn't work. Um, they've been working collaboratively on that throughout this process. And I think that um, for us to finish at least the core of the city's work on this, um, which allows the project then to proceed with its design. I mean, obviously no construction would take place until that jurisdictional transfer has happened. There's other steps in that process that need to happen. I think that um, it makes sense for us to approve that now. I think that these folks who are interested in the project have turned out to no less than a dozen meetings to tell us over and over again about the project. And, you know, I think that uh, we need to move it forward because we have steps remaining in the process through the jurisdictional transfer that make sure that that transfer happens appropriately. But 
there's certainly no putting the cart before the horse on this. The only contingency in our approval is that we are waiting on DOT. And that really is all this project should be waiting on. Any project that invests $40 million in our community and changes the landscape the way this one does, the only thing they should be waiting on is DOT. They should not be waiting on us. So I urge you to support this and let's get it forward. We have a motion by Nutting, a second by Rasmussen, and you may begin voting. This is, oh, go ahead, Gary. Eric, can you, can you describe how you see the, this moving forward? Um, so, sorry about that, but, you know, I think, well, I think we just need to. Just makes um, it more interesting. Come on. Um, yeah, I can. Um, to, to the best that I know, I mean, I think Lisa summed it up pretty well. Um, you know, we're looking, the, the consultant had hired um, an engineering firm to do an analysis uh, for the rerouting of the highway, and that's what's going on right now. That report is not complete yet. There's also an environmental report that needs to be conducted as well um, to see if there's going to be any environmental impacts with um, the rerouting of the traffic uh, down those new two roadways. The other thing is we're not sure yet on what the DOT is going to require as far as those intersections and, and any work within the right of way on those roadways so that they're compliant. Um, and so how we see this moving forward in our conversations with the DOT is that they'll complete um, their study of the new route of the highway. They'll send it to um, the DOT. They will review that. They'll probably have some comments. At the same time, the environmental review will be prepared. There will need to be a public information meeting on that environmental review as well as public comment. They anticipate that in early spring. Um, based on those comments and that information, the DOT will render a, a FONSI for that, the finding of no significant impact. That's what we're anticipating. Um, and at that point, once the DOT is comfortable, they'll um, put together an SMA, a state municipal agreement for the city uh, to approve, um, transferring that um, that roadway uh, to the city and they will take over um, the roadway with the new route of um, the state highway. It's just that I feel very, um, you know, now I don't know that we've known about the environmental report, so now the DNR is also involved with the, uh, there's an environmental issues no, it's it's just more on the on the impacts of the traffic, uh, you know. To you know, there, there'll be a formal report. The DOT uh, will review that, um, you know. So it's it's um, are they having any impacts on historical properties? Are there you know? It's pretty standard, um, just because the feds are involved as well. So, yeah. Mrs. Rasmussen. Thank you, Eric. Okay. Thank yeah. you. Mm -hmm. It looks like everyone's done oh, speaking. Okay, go ahead. Everyone's done speaking, so um, you may begin voting. That motion has passed 10 to 1. And file number 18-0704, joint resolution vacating and discontinuing North 2nd Street between McIndoe Street and Fulton Street. SISM approved 4 to 0, plan approved 6 to 0. I'll entertain a motion to accept. Motion by Mr. Nutting. Do I have a second? By Mrs. Rasmussen. Mr. Neal. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, one a small interest or concern on this. Um, you know, something we've talked about uh, in previous meetings uh, was the the use of this of Second Street now uh, for the semi trucks uh, that are. You know, loading and unloading at ABC, and they pull in there and then back up to the dock. And um, subsequently, I think that has been addressed and accommodated. Um, but what stands out to me is essentially, uh, is this then be going to become the property of the two adjoining uh, entities and uh, taxable to them? Um, or is there a way that it would be more like a, a a blind alley, if you will, that the city maintains uh, to keep that ability to, you know, use it for the, the trucks and whatnot without those property owners having to, you know, bear uh, the responsibility of maintenance and such going forward. Okay. 
Mrs. Rasmussen. Thank you. Um, we talked about that a little bit in the SISM committee, and it's not Second Street that the trucks are using. They're using Fulton, but they're pulling into Second to back into the dock. And so in working that out amongst themselves as neighbors and developers, they've agreed that um, it's a, essentially a Spirus Hospital's driveway. They'll allow ABC Supply to access that driveway. Most of their truck traffic in and out happens early in the morning before the clinics even open. And so they arranged um, an understanding between them that they'd still be able to use that driveway to get in and out and back their trucks in for as long as ABC Supply exists at that site. But uh, they, they did work that out. The reason that this is on also is that the way we set up the vacation of um, uh, Franklin and Second is um, so that it flows together that when McIndoo is finalized, that the other block is finalized as well. We weren't going to give up the right of way too soon on Second. So this one is linked to the success of the McIndoo closure. If McIndoo doesn't close, this then does not happen either. We have those two, like as a cascade effect, the way they come together, they have the same contingencies because uh, we approved Franklin because there were no issues with Franklin, but this one particular block we held up waiting on McIndoo because the two are codependent. So that's why they're both here tonight and that's why they're both basically hitched together. Mr. Gisselman. Lee side, is that really clear in the resolve? I'm not sure that the resolves speak to that issue. I, I can understand the McIndoo. Um, I can understand the McIndoo, you know, standing alone. But this is sort of contingent on what goes on with regard to this uh, second, uh, the 200 block of McIndoo. Uh, is th is that somewhere in the resolves here of this resolution, or am I not seeing it? I believe, Gary, it's in the first be it resolved paragraph, which says that the described portion of the street is vacated and discontinued contingent on the WSDOT jurisdictional transfer of, of McIndoe Mac between North 2nd and 3rd Street. Does that answer your question? So that, so in your understanding, that phrase so, you know, yes. makes that contingent? So if that doesn't happen, then this one block of 2nd Street will not be vacated. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, you may begin voting, please. That motion has passed 10 to 1. And at this time, I'll invite anybody to come forward if they'd like to have any public comment on any matters, both tonight or on anything else going on. I'll say that once. Would anybody like to come forward and speak on a matter? Going twice. Anybody want to come forward and speak? Public comment is closed, and at this time, I'll take a motion to adjourn. Don't everybody do it at once. Come on. Mr. Peckham, Mr. Martins, thank you. Begin voting, please. Motion passed unanimously. Thank you, everybody, for attending. Have a wonderful night. <laughs>